Well, in early 2013, we were contacted by a gentleman who said he was a dealer in portraits, specifically presidential portraits, uh, who had acquired a, uh, a painting that he was pretty sure was James Monroe. It was sold at auction as an unidentified person, but uh, he brought it to us on the assumption that it was President Monroe. And so when we got a chance to look at it, we thought that that's really our feeling too. But you always have to have a certain degree of skepticism in something like mm -hmm. this. You know, someone we've not had dealings with before and sort of sight unseen, here's a previously unknown portrait of a president. You, you naturally have your guard up a little bit. So we began to analyze the painting, which is unsigned, and of a different dimension than you normally see, and it's a totally different view of Monroe from what we normally see. So that started a process of research, uh, first just examining the portrait itself and looking at the features, physical features. You see the hairline, you see the mole uh, under his eye, you see the cleft chin. These are, these are pretty well-known documented features of, of James Monroe. You also look for any evidence of whether this is an overpainting. Is this something that was maybe some other portrait that has been doctored to look like Monroe? We've actually had one of those in our collection from many years ago. So you, you start off just trying to disprove the idea that that's who it is first, uh, or that it might be a much later painting, it might be something done in the, the, the 20th century or something. And taking it to Colonial Williamsburg, to the National Portrait Gallery, and with our own research, every test we applied told us, yes, this is an early 19th century product, and this is evidently James Monroe. So satisfied with that, we went ahead and purchased the painting, and then continued the process of figuring out who painted this and when and why. The physical appearance of President Monroe in this uh, painting seems to suggest it was at the beginning of his presidency or, or maybe just before. Mm -hmm. It also appears sort of unfinished. It, it looks as though some of the details, especially in his clothing, are not that finely executed. But the face and the personality really come out very clearly in it. The curator uh, at the National Portrait Gallery, Ellen Miles, was the first to suggest that this might be the product of an artist named Bass Otis, who um, uh, was a very well-known portrait painter in the early 19th century, not as well-known today. And he was uh, contacted by a Philadelphia gallery owner named Joseph Delaplane to go south, particularly into Virginia and, and other southern states, and paint images of famous people for a catalog that Delaplane wanted to do, and had the great title of the Repository of the Lives and Portraits of Distinguished American Characters. So there were 24 portraits that Bass Otis painted of people like James and Dolly Madison, of Thomas Jefferson, and James Monroe. And he was very persistent. He hectored these people. He badgered them to get them to sit for him. Thomas Jefferson really didn't want to do it, but he grudgingly did. He complained about it in a letter to Monroe. Monroe is running for president in the summer of 1816. He's a busy man. He's Secretary of State, but he finally agrees to sit for Bass Otis. Painting's done. And after all this, the catalog's never produced. The paintings largely uh, travel around to Baltimore first in Charles Wilson Peale's museum. 1837, they're purchased by P.T. Barnum and are exhibited in New York for a while. And then they sort of scatter. Um, the Jefferson one is at Monticello. Uh, Dolly Madison's is at the New York Historical Society. James Madison's is at Princeton. And no one knows whatever happened to the Monroe portrait. We feel we now know. We feel that this is the work of Bass Otis. This is the James Monroe portrait from that era that was done rather quickly on speculation for this catalog. So it's kind of a, a snapshot or a Polaroid, if you will, of the 19th century. And by taking it recently to Monticello and putting it side by side with the known Thomas Jefferson Bass Otis painting, we're even more certain that that's what we have. And uh, while we may never get the actual final incontrovertible evidence that that's the case, every uh, test we've applied so far supports the idea that that's what this is. And that's what makes the process of working with historical artifacts so much fun sometimes. Well, and the fact that an artifact like this can just show up. Right. That's, that's the amazing thing. I mean, we, we didn't go looking for this because we didn't know it existed. Yeah. And we knew there were paintings out there that had been done of James Monroe over time that have not been accounted for. And, and so technically we knew this was one of those, but it was almost a footnote really because so little uh, had been heard of it for such a long time for a project that never actually happened. And there is one woodcut sort of drawing of it that did end up in another publication that is clearly, although it's attributed to Bass Otis, um, it's been determined by later research is 
is not a depiction of that painting or, or we think of this painting. It was a depiction of another one by another artist. So even what little visual evidence we had to go on wasn't exactly right. We, we have really had to try and let the artifact tell the story for us uh, in this, this research. Is there any other Monroe artifact out there that's <clears throat> lost or that, that you would like to find if, if it still is around? Actually, yes, and it's interesting. We have just a hint of something that um, for many years in the Williamsburg area, uh, an elderly gentleman claimed that he owned and was riding around in James Monroe's carriage that had been acquired from uh, his descendants many years before in the late 19th century and that it had passed down in his family and that he was using it. This is a story that goes back to the 1930s. And there's, there's one picture of him in what looks like a, <clears throat> a, a typical carriage of that period but we don't know any more about uh, what happened to it, where it ended up, whether the story's true, but you, you have to wonder whether someone would manufacture the story that they had James mm -hmm. Monroe's carriage. Just the idea of it being so odd makes it seem like it could be true. But if that thing is sitting in some barn somewhere, you know, it would be wonderful to find, but I don't know that we would ever find it. But we never thought we'd see this come in yeah. through the door either. So you, you always hold that hope that there's something great out there.